Okay, I think we are live. I'm just going to jump onto my Facebook group because I just shared it across and see if we can actually see the video. This is actually the second time. Yeah, it's working. Is this the second time ever in seven years that I'm going live here? And a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed. First things first, let me know in the comments if you can hear and see me. Obviously, if you're watching this in the replay, let me know where you are from. And we have one person watching. Exciting. <laughs> so this new life I wanted to try out because I'm very, very bad at just sticking to one video take and not editing it all the time. And if I was to go live, sorry, if I was to go and record a video, I would go back and edit it five million times before I actually posted it on YouTube. And then many, many days would pass or weeks or months. I don't know. And I haven't been very consistent on this channel either. But today is the first time again, me doing this. So congratulations, you're here, you're watching this. So let's get started. I have recently moved into a new space yeah I have been a lash artist for 14 years I had a home salon little backstory of of course because you may not have seen me in a while and I had a home salon for a good six or seven years fell pregnant had two kids worked from home still then I moved into a larger space because I started having students and then I bought my own space right before COVID and then everything went to shite and I had to reevaluate. And so I was actually selling the space uh, this year. So the sale just went through this year. And, and at the end of last year, I moved into a new space within Salon Lane here in Brisbane, Australia. Salon Lane is a kind of co-working space, is a huge warehouse type scenario and they have built so so many different rooms within salon lane and in those rooms you can do anything you can do beauty therapy you can do cosmetic tattooing eyebrows lashes uh there is fine line tattooers in there there's tokyo head spas in there and lots and lots of hairdressers not yet because where i am it's brand new but the, the hope is in the future that this space is going to be really filled which also kind of brought me to making this video because times have really changed and me starting a brand new business from scratch and actually going into client services, again, rather than just training, is completely new to me. And I have done this in the past, of course. I have built successful uh, lash businesses twice, once in just client services and then once in student education and now going back to three full time three to four full days a week hopefully to see clients and then do two days of training within the week is the plan and I am very very much getting there and I wanted to kind of share that journey with you because I know business but Right now, times are tough. 2024, 2025, and probably even going into 2026, you will be seeing a lot more inflation. Yeah, I believe we are in a recession right now, even though it's not officially announced. But I mean, come on. If I go now and buy one bag of groceries, it's like 18 or 90 Australian dollars. By the way, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification in case you want to see me live again. Thank you so much. That really helps. Seeing that I'm only um, doing this once every, I don't know, few years. I will aim and do YouTube live every week now, by the way. I will get much, much more back into training, which is really exciting. But anyway, back to um, starting a new business. It is actually quite difficult at the moment to build a new business because of cost of living crisis. Prices are rising. People are losing their businesses, they're losing their jobs, they have to move out of their houses and move further out of the city because they just can't afford it. And a lot of people that are losing their jobs, they then try and become their own boss, work from home, and they love to be in digital marketing or they like to do services like lashes and brows. So I have a lot of students currently that are getting more into digital marketing. There's also information in the description if you want to know more about that. 
But then the other 70% want to become their own lash artist. They have their own lash business. They want to make their own time. And they don't have any idea how to do that yet. And this is what this video is about. So I am going to actually add some timeline to this after I have gone live because obviously getting into the meat and potatoes is the most important. But being live for the first time in so long, I thought I needed to kind of set this up a little bit more and explain to you my story. All right, so I have made a few notes so I don't forget anything. So I want to talk about six of the main factors of how you can actually still build a business in 2024 if you have no idea about business yeah of course it helps to do some kind of business courses on the side if you want to make that come along faster if you want to fast track your success and you want to learn more about social media for example or attracting clients and retention and things like that and this is completely separately or separate from eyelash extensions, yeah? So this is really, really clear, I hope. Eyelash extensions and being able to perform good services is one part. The other part is the business side of things, and I kind of want to talk about the business side of things today. So number one is if you are starting your own business in 2024, location actually matters. Why? Because if you start your business now in a very rural area, where people do not have money and they don't invest in luxury services, which eyelash extensions are, it is going to be very, very hard to build a sustainable and really profitable supportive business. You can still start a business and build a business, but obviously can't charge very much. And so your hourly rate is actually going to be really poor because you live in an area where people can't A, afford it and B, may not even want to invest in beauty services. And I'm talking about areas that are not right in the city I mean more outskirts and suburbs that are maybe not as well off you know we all have those kind of suburbs like Brisbane I'm thinking for example you have the north and the south and you have the outskirts like the bay area and the pricing really varies from salon to salon money can still be made but it is a lot more difficult to find the type of clients that you want to attract to build a really highly profitable business and build upon that. So that is number one. Yeah. So this is why I decided to actually invest more in renting a space in a in an area where I know there is wealthy people in that area. Yeah. I am now in Tenerife, which is part of Brisbane that's known as one of the wealthier areas. The downside with that is if you're starting from scratch, and you have no clients, the rent is high. So you need to make sure that you have a buffer in the first couple of months and maybe even um, talk to your landlord if you can find some kind of a deal and giving you maybe 50% off or maybe even giving you first couple of weeks for free so that you can start advertising. And I'll get into advertising and, and organic marketing in this video as well. But location does matter, again, depending on how much you want to charge. You can't charge $200 for a set of lashes in an area where you just have high rises with people with one bedroom units that have eight people living in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about cities like in the UK or even in Germany or somewhere like a big city. Like people don't have much money, I don't know, in the US. Just think of it as a kind of supported living, like government type living if you are in one of the units and you're charging $200, it's going to be very, very hard for you to get clients. And the people that will come in, they probably not want to come in there because they want to experience something in the area. They want to be able to go maybe for coffee before or after, like the type of high-end clientele. They don't hang out everywhere. Unfortunately, that's just the way that we are in right now. If you want to and if you are in a situation where you can't afford rent, high rent on your own in a uh, like one bedroom unit <laughs> to do your own salon, then you can buy yourself or rent a bed in a co-working scenario, such as Salon Lane, a little bit more pricey. You might want to go to, a friend of mine has done a, an extra room in a hairdresser and you might want to ask some beauty therapists that don't offer lashes, for example, and then negotiate a weekly rent 
of the room, bring your own equipment or they have theirs, whatever you might want to do. I think actually starting something with the support of someone else and not paying a huge amount of money in the start is probably the smartest thing to do right now in the kind of climate that we're living in. Yeah. And then obviously look at their location as well and research a little bit of who lives there. Yeah. Can the people that live in the areas afford your lashes? Would they want to get lashes done? How many people in the area are currently doing what you're doing? And chances are if there is hundreds doing the same thing, it's probably not going to be very lucrative to open up there if everyone is super high end also. Because if you are brand new to business, you need to build up a brand first and it's not going to happen right from the start. Unless you are amazing at building connections and you are an extremely awesome networker, which I never used to be, but I'm getting better at it. And then, yeah, then you can definitely go ahead and attract some more clients because your networking is amazing. So my tip number one, yeah, choosing the right location, which goes to tip number two is obviously choosing the right pricing, uh, which I kind of already touched on. So make sure you do your market research and um, think about the quality of your work as well, right? It's not just about how much you think you want to charge. Like if you're brand new and you want to charge $250, is it worth it for the clients? How long do they have to lie down for? Like I personally think you can charge more the faster you are. It's not like a hairdresser where you're comfortably sitting down for three hours. People get antsy after two, two and a half hours of lying down. Some people even earlier than that. So the faster that you are, the more you can charge. And the better your attention is, the more you can charge as well. People might come to you for the first time if you're really good at marketing, uh, but they might not return because your retention was poor and it took too long. So price your services according to your area, to the types of clients that you are getting and your skill set. And if you are a beginner, start with beginner prices. You know how hairdressers have like um, a junior price, second year and like a senior price? You could do the same for you, for yourself. Uh, in your first year, you might ch charge a little bit less and then you can up your pricing according to your skills becoming better as well. Attracting clients. Yeah, this is a big one and I can literally record an entire video about that, but I'm not going to cover it too much in detail because it is another few topics and there's so many different ways and channels that can use these days. But in eyelash extensions, I would highly, highly, highly recommend to first and foremost go with Instagram and Facebook. And if you are young and you like, I don't know, 18 or you may be in your early 20s or something like that and you may think that uh, Facebook is dead, it's not because you need Facebook in order to actually advertise to people. So I would recommend you do that. Let me just very, very quickly share this. I want to see if the live stream is working if I'm sharing it now as I'm going live because somehow the video I posted earlier doesn't show it. Okay. I'm hiding the other post. Hmm. It's not showing as live. That's okay. I will try and do better next time. Anyway, so Instagram and Facebook, right? Facebook uh, because of the advertising and Instagram is owned by Facebook, by Mark Zuckerberg, it's all one. So you want to do both. And to be successful on social media, <coughs> you have to be active. Simple as that. So the types of posts that you want to share. So first of all, you have obviously your Instagram feed, like your business card, which has to look somewhat pretty and has to have good photos, good lighting with the photos and really good work. Like don't just share your work because you have done some lashes. Only share the best of the best of the best because as soon as you share something that doesn't look very good, people assume that is what you do. And so only share your best work, especially if you are a beginner. I would rather wait until your skill set has been built up a little bit and then share your work after that, yeah? So share your work, share some inspirational quotes I might even I can't screen share can I let me just quickly have a look I can oh this is exciting um, 
Okay, let me show my entire screen. And I'm just quickly jumping on to, this is the group that I was talking about. If you're not in Lash Tribe yet, by the way, make sure you go ahead and join Lash Tribe while you can because I'm thinking about actually shutting the group up and moving everything to school. But I wanted to share you my Instagram feed so that you know what I am talking about. Oh, great, now it wants me to log in. I hope this works because I haven't logged in via my desktop for a very long time. Of course, it wants me to have a security code. Sorry, guys. I will see if it sends it to me right away. Otherwise, I will. Oh, that wasn't even the right code. Hang on. Resend it. This is why I usually record videos first and then edit them because of things like this. But it's okay because you guys can just scroll forward to the area where I'm sharing it with you, my Instagram account. All right. This should be good now. Come on. We've got all day. We don't. I'm going to save this quickly. No. All right, so let me go to Lash Tribe. So this is my Instagram. And I just want to show you kind of what we are planning out at the moment, right? Don't worry about the very first thing because I have a couple of things that are pinned. But what we are aiming on doing right now, let me scroll back down a little bit more, is to share some lash work and then also like at least three or four reels every nine or so, or so tiles products because that's what we do as well and then we started sharing um some fun stuff as well like for example some of these videos so funny videos that we are resharing they are actually getting a lot of traction i'll show you um the reach that we're getting with these this is one from three days ago it has ten thousand, and we have ten thousand there and then this one here is like twenty thousand now yeah so I would highly recommend you post at least one reel every day. If you can't do that, do one every couple of days and try and post reels that are educational, that are solving an issue for your clients, that are kind of on trend, maybe resharing something or screen re um, recording something from someone else. Make sure you tag them when you're using their content and funny things like funny videos are going really, really well. Uh, this one here is 10,000. What lash artists look like after 10 hours of lashing straight with magnifying glasses on. This is what I look like exactly. So things that your ideal client would relate to. So obviously, if you are wanting to advertise to clients directly, it would be different content. You would share some products, some lashes, maybe some how to care for your lashes or shocking facts about lashes, maybe sharing some really bad work versus really good work behind the scenes, how you apply lashes, anything like that. And, and if you are a lash artist that actually wants to attract other lash artists as well, because you might be a trainer, pop onto Lash Tribe and have a look because that is my ideal target market, obviously. So this is uh, for the reels and we give the reels a good cover. Not every time we're sharing a reel across to a post, it doesn't always align with the aesthetic that I'm going for. Um, details are hidden while you show your screen. Okay. Um, but you can, um, I don't even know what I said now. Oh, yeah. But you can use obviously covers on their own as well like this one for example it's not a video it's a slider where you can slide across sliders are really good if they're educational for example how to clean your lashes and obviously share your lash work in between and have some inspirational stuff in between i don't think it's needed these days and let me quickly stop my share sorry i don't think it's needed these days to have it super super organized i think as long as you're sharing content that is shareable and that is savable those are the two main factors in social media right now instagram as well as facebook if you are amazing at social media and you love recording videos and you love sharing your face and showing your face on camera and you're really good at content creation add tiktok to it as well 
and maybe some YouTube shorts. But, you know, one thing at a time. I think if you master Instagram and that just gets shared across to Facebook and you post your daily reels and three to five stories every day about your behind the scenes, about your work day, follow some really amazing creators that you love to watch and try and kind of emulate that in a way that you are making it your own thing but in your industry yeah I get a lot of inspirations from other creators that are not at all in the beauty industry but somehow I feel I can kind of tweak it and make it fit for us which is really amazing all righty um let me go back to my notes so the client attraction and marketing is kind of in the one. Now, I want to talk about off social media events. So when I first started moving into my new space, the way that I got 16 clients like that within the first two weeks without advertising, without any any money spent, was to go to a local coffee shop and introduce myself to the owner. We're now on first name basis. And I said, hey, if you send people to me, I'm going to give you a kickback. Yeah, I also have made some collaborations with a few of the hairdressers, excuse me, that are on the floor within Salon Lane. And a couple of the people from there have actually come to see me as well. And then obviously there's also inorganic, which is paid marketing, where I run a couple of Facebook ads, which I'm not going to go into detail now because again, Facebook ads is a completely different kettle of fish, which we can cover another time. But really thinking about where would people hang out that could potentially be your ideal client, such as coffee shops, I would go to your local gym and offer the people at the gym an incentive, maybe even give them free lashes for life if they keep sending people to you, yeah? Obviously, if they don't send anyone to you after a month or so, maybe rethink that deal. But I think it's it's more so about giving more and then receiving back from there than trying to just give a little bit because these days it doesn't work. Yeah, people always, there's so many influencers. Everyone wants something from everyone. And I think you really need to offer something quite large. Like you can come in every two weeks for an hour and get your lashes refilled for free if you keep sending me people. That's $130 free for them and they just keep sending people. Yeah, gyms are amazing. Coffee shops, um, maybe even makeup stores. Uh, clothing stores depending on the area that you're in and this is why my number one tip was choosing your location based on that like if you have a home salon it's going to be very very difficult for you if especially if you're more rural to make collaborations and get like affiliates for your business in your mini mini little area it's going to be very very hard so you would have to run paid ad uh, instagram ads facebook ads and really create a strategy behind it on how you can get people to come to you when you're so far away from everyone else so really pick your location I think this is literally one of the most important things if you have a great location where there's lots of your ideal client market hanging uh, target market hanging out you have half one obviously you've got to go do the work now and actually go out on the street and actually do it in person don't try and phone people up don't try and just send an email it's all about the face-to-face contact these days and being friendly with them and being open and telling them exactly that you're brand new, you would love to collaborate, send some people, I'll give you kickbacks, yeah? Um, now, in terms of location, if you have a home salon, that is not an issue. Like I had a home salon for years, but because I was in a location, I just wanted to make make that really clear, a home salon doesn't mean it's bad as long as your home salon is an, uh, in a good location where you can actually collaborate with local shops. Yeah, I'm not just talking about having a shop front or being in another salon. Yeah, home salons are totally fine with that as well. So we've covered the location, pricing your services, attracting clients, marketing your business so that people come and see you and love get in touch with your brand and love to return hopefully as well and uh, building client relationships is my next one this is where so many people fail because now you have advertised you kind of know what you're doing with your lashes but if clients don't enjoy coming to you they will not return and that has a lot of different things included which means 
A. Parking. Can they park somewhere? Do they need to find parking? Do they have to pay lots of parking before they even come to you? That can already set them up for, for the appointment where they get annoyed and they're rushing, yeah? Unfortunately, it has happened a couple of times in my location too, but now people know they have to come maybe 10 minutes earlier and they know the areas where they can park. But setting them up from the start, telling them this is where you can park and then you come up, yeah? Making sure you sending them an email beforehand so that they know what to expect. Clean your lashes beforehand, come without makeup on, yeah? If they can't, that's fine, but tell them at least in an email what to expect. Certain expectations in all businesses is already preventing questions and also their expectations are less because they already know what to expect, if that makes sense. Now, the atmosphere. Atmosphere is huge and you can make it beautiful whether you have a home salon or you are in a beautiful studio. You can make your space amazing, comfortable, luxurious, luscious, and just really welcoming for your clients. Yeah, that's a really, really, really big one too. Make sure the temperature is nice. Make sure you have enough blankets if they get cold. Make sure you have an aircon on if it gets too hot. There's nothing worse than freezing your butt off or sweating like a pig when you're lying there on the table, on the on the massage table for two hours straight. I hate it. I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to go to sleep. Comfort. Your bed needs to be the most comfortable thing people have ever laid in apart from their bed. I get every time, like 99% of the time, new clients will say, oh, my God, this bed is so comfortable. And they will say it as they're lying down and they will say it as they wake up. (laughs) A lot of people come to me and they don't realize just how comfortable it would be that they would be able to fall asleep. But I would say... Again, 99% of my clients will nod off at some stage, whether it's like a full-on sleep or it's a little dozing off, yeah? Lash naps are the best. So make sure you really cover your bed with some beautiful foam. Memory foam is great. In winter, I have a heated blanket underneath and have some covers and have a roll underneath their legs, underneath the knees, especially for older clients, for their back. Um, I like that as well. I consider myself an older client now. And um, what else? Mm, Make sure the head and their neck are like supported and they don't hurt, yeah? And then obviously it's about you and how you make them feel and how you present yourself and how you, and this sounds horrible, but how you kind of smell and look because if you haven't had a shower in two days and they can smell it or you just had a cigarette and they don't smoke, they won't return. Some of some of the people will say, oh, this is lovely, but if I lay there and I can smell your smoky hands, I will probably not come back to you to get my lashes done unless you are a smoker, they are a smoker. Totally fine, right? But most of the time, people prefer people that are smelling nice <laughs> and that make them feel comfortable. And also read the room. So if you're constantly yapping at them and they just lie there and they re- respond in like one-word answers – most likely they don't really feel comfortable talking to you, yeah? So something that I ask at the beginning of every appointment, and I don't say new clients, it's every single one throughout the board is, how do you feel today? Would you like to have a chat or would you like me to zip it? And I literally say that. And they laugh and I go, oh, actually I just want to relax a bit. And then I don't say anything. I listen to a podcast. I have music on for them. I ask them as well, what kind of music would you like to listen to? Some people come in with their own headphones and podcasts or their own music on Spotify. Um, You might even have clients. You can create your own Spotify list for them, which is really, really amazing too. And then you can add that every time they're coming in as a little special touch. Um, But music is so important and setting that ambient ambience for them so that they feel just so welcome and comfortable like you just want to feel like the most cared about and nurtured person that day for that hour and hour and a half when they're coming in yeah your people will always remember how you made them feel over the type of service that they have received so if someone makes you feel like crap you probably won't return to them right but if they make you feel a hundred bucks like you are the only client for them in the world yes this is how you get percentages in retention 
every single client so far that I have had in the last four months and starting this new brand, brand, brand new business, 100% are returning customers now. Some of them have returned every two weeks. Some of them have returned once a month, depending on their schedules and their work commitments. And then some people, um, because I offer other services as well, they have come back um, once every couple of months so far. But everyone so far has returned which is incredible, which I love. Yeah, I make them feel like princesses and queens when they come in. Yeah, I love it because you get that kind of in return. Anyway, my favorite thing, client care. Yeah, so be a nice human. <laughs> um, so this is about building relationships um, because, yeah, it really fosters loyalty and this is how you get referrals as well, which brings me to my very, very last point, which is um, referrals for your existing clients. So every time I have a brand new client coming in, I will give them a aftercare bag, which is Lash Tribe branded and it has a cleanser in it, a cleansing brush. It has a, a three referral cards in it that they can give to friends or family or anyone. And if one of the people that they refer with a little card comes back to me, both of them get $25 off a service. And I also have a voucher for another service in that little pouch. And the pouch itself cost me about $5 from AliExpress. And the cleanser, of course, it's because it's a Lash Tribe cleanser. It's not the world. And it's only for new clients with fresh new sets. But that alone, the value, the perceived value is so high because they're getting literally $75 in referral cards. They're getting a voucher towards another service, which is valued at around $50. The pouch itself is valued at $30 because it's a really nice one. So the perceived value is very high and it doesn't cost me that much and it's fine. Like I can afford it if that means that this client will return time and time again. People love gifts and they love to be cared about. These are the main, 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 main things because you will save so much money in uh, marketing if you have clients return time and time again in lashes as well as in brows lash lifting anything like that the return rate is much 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 more important than trying to get new customers all the time and if you have people returning less than 70 75 percent you probably need to do a bit more upskill training Ask me why that might be as well and describe how you deal with clients. Um, so it might be that they didn't feel comfortable for whatever reason or it could be that maybe something could change in their life too. Like their circumstances could have changed where they maybe don't have as much money anymore. Some people just try lashes once. They don't like it, you know. Um, but a lot of the time if you're all over, client retention rate is less than 70 75%. Ask me and we'll discuss it. We'll troubleshoot it. Send me a message on uh, Instagram, on Lash Tribe. And if you're joining my new school community as well, which is going to be uh, launched in May, you can ask me questions there as well. And the turnover rate of answering them is around 24 hours. So, yeah, you can do that as well. So just to uh, kind of sum up everything, we have covered choosing your location, pricing your services, how to attract new clients and market to more clients organically. I'm not going to dive into Facebook ads today because it's not very beginner friendly. Well, it is, but I've already been live here for 40 minutes. And this is a three-hour video most likely that I can record on another time, most likely in the school community. Um, and then building your client relationships. Yeah, which is your client retention. So funnily enough, I have a course which I call retention retention. So retention of clients and retention of lashes <laughs> because those two factors are literally the two most important things other than being uh, a nice person and having a good location and fair pricing for the area that you are in. So if you enjoyed this video, um, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. This was the first one I have done in a very, very long time. And I'm planning on coming live a bit more. I will be chopping this video up as well to make some shorts out of it. Because I think it's amazing to have this in little bite sizes. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments what other kind of topics you would like me to cover. I'm thinking about going live once a week for maybe five or ten minutes and just reviewing 
lash sets if this is something that you fancy um, post some of the sets in the lash tribe group facebook group if you're not in it yet make sure you check out the link in the description and don't forget to subscribe have a blessed day i love you all and i see you soon bye